hello everyone and welcome to my youtube channel so today our topic is how to configure fortigate firewall as an hd1 device so there is an hd1 feature in fortigate and we are going to configure that feature so it is basically uh, I'll, I'll tell you okay how uh, for hd1 uh, you know behaves in fortigate so if there are two links okay one is connected to this ISP router and this uh, second one is connected to this ISP router if uh, what what will uh, usually happen in HD1 feature we can you we can in, uh, you know combine these both links okay so traffic load balancing can happen and at a time we can you know utilize both the links but if one of the link is having a performance uh, issue like is the if there is any degradation packet loss latency to any specific server so what SD1 will do it will uh, you know it will uh, not consider that path it will just consider the uh, the the path which is not having any kind of latency redundancy so we are going to configure this in our uh, today's video I'll uh, show you so first of all we will configure the interface configuration first one is the port one so I have given it is an DHCP IP address but I don't want uh, the entire management traffic to go via this port one so I'll I'm making it as a static now I will configure the ISP links port 2 so for this I need to verify what IP address I have given over here I will say 1 slash 24 okay and uh, we are going to allow HTTPS SSH ping and click on ok similarly I will uh, configure this port in the subnet port 2 sorry port 3 now what we will do we will move towards the port 4 configuration that is the LAN interface I will define the role as LAN and I will give an IP address ok so now we will move towards the SD-WAN configuration first of all we will go into the SD-WAN zones and we will configure the SD-WAN member so what all ports will be the part of the SD-WAN member port 2 and port 3 as they are both connected to the uplink routers ok and what is the gateway for this uh, uh, the uh, outgoing interface this one ok now what I will do I will uh, un I will add the another interface port 3 and what is the gateway this is the gateway you guys can see bandwidth sharing is 50 50 percent for both the interfaces volume is also same and sessions is also same if you want to create an uh, extra SD WAN zone you can also do that so we will try that only uh, we will uh, you know we will uh, not uh, add this interface is an existing interface we will create an SD WAN zone so that you guys can uh, understand properly how we can you know c create an SD WAN zone as well so I will give it as a name as SD WAN and I will add members port 2 and port 3 port 2 and 
IP address of this similarly I will add port 3 and create So now we have created an SD-WAN zone, and in that SD-WAN zone, we have added these interf the uh, these port two and port three interfaces. By default, you will find one virtual link, but uh, for the for your understanding, I have uh, created it from the scratch. Okay. Now what we will do? We will configure the uh, uh, static route. So what we have done, if the uh, if the if the land side users want to communicate with the internet, so entire traffic will go to the SD WAN interface, and in SD WAN interface we have added these two interfaces. If you guys can see, we can check over here. default route is there and the it is using two links and we will do a small testing if we are able to ping or not see why we are able to communicate we are able to communicate with the internet okay now what we will do we will uh, configure a firewall policy from port 4 to hd WAN. port 4 sorry service will source will be all and destination will be all okay and uh, we have to enable the natting and click on okay now so this is the uh, you know basic configuration now the important configuration is remaining regarding SD WAN zones okay so we have created the SD WAN zones you know we have added the uh, one SD WAN zone and I have added the ports into it but uh, we want a performance SLA like in the starting of the video I have discussed how the automatic traffic failover will happen if this link gets degraded okay so we can create a rule I will uh, create a rule for packet loss. Okay, so name will be global DNS. Okay, server will be, for example, say if I am giving the DNS World Wide Web dot Google dot com. Okay and if you want to specify which interface you want to add or it will automatically you know sync for the all SD1 interfaces and if I increase the check interval for example say 1000 ok and if I say uh, like after how many uh, failures uh, we have to consider this uh, link as inactive and after how many failures we have to consider this link uh, as a uh, uh, active link and you know failures before act inactive means uh, like how many failures are there if the link is going inactive okay and uh, like ho after how many uh, uh, like uh, successful restores we have to consider this link as an active so it's five and I will uh, keep the other uh, settings as, as it is okay it is saying global DNS Okay, we will keep it as HTTP. Okay, fine. 
so what we will do we will keep the ping for it uh, okay and it is taking now so you guys can see so here we are getting the uh, the packet loss graph for the global dns policy and the latency graph and the jitter graph now i'll uh, turn on this pc so our uh, lan side interface was in the subnet of 10.1.1 .1 .1. okay you can see i will give a ip address is reachable now I'll see if the global DNS is reachable or not it's reachable because the configuration is perfect but uh, before moving forward I will show you some configuration which I have made on this routers so that you can also you guys can also you know uh, implement that configuration what I have done uh, I have created an access list for this uh, IP addresses okay the van side the uh, so the subnet between the 40 gate port 2 and fast uh, fast ethernet 0 slash 0 between this R2 router okay and I have created a, a NAT policy okay if the inside source list from this access list if any user comes translate it to the this IP address fast ethernet 1 slash 0 okay similar configuration I have done on this router as well See. for the public IP do the trans uh, translation if the user comes from this uh, uh, access list to this fast ethernet 1 slash 0 so what we are go basically doing we are translating the IP addresses uh, from uh, this IP address to the uh, the, the my laptop IP address which is going to connect to the my Wi-Fi modem so if I do ping from here from the PC I'll do a repeat ping and I'll see if the translation is happening or not the users it's coming traffic is coming from inside from 10 dot uh, slash 24 subnet it is getting translated to this IP address and this IP address is further getting translated to the public IP which is my laptop IP address similarly over here you guys can see it is first getting translated it to this port 3 and this subnet IP address okay it, it is an inside global inside local and inside global is that the this interface IP address so pat is happening basically so what we will do now I will go into the SD WAN performance SLA if you click on global DNS you guys can see uh, according to the my home internet we are getting this graph this performance like how many latency is there okay you guys can see this is for port 2 this is for port 3 so you cannot you know reduce the latency but packet loss it should be zero you can also see the jitter now what I'll do for testing purpose I'll shut one of this link I'll shut this link before that I will show you something so 
see as of now both the paths are preferable uh, once I will shut this link fast ether in one slash zero only this 200 path will be the path via port 3 will be in the routing table As I said, the path via port 3 is now in consideration. You guys can see, packet loss, I said it should be 0, but it is getting increased. Because port 2 is get, the path via port 2 is down. Actually, the ISP interface is down. But the path via port 3, it is still active. You guys can see, latency will be getting increased. You cannot get latency because the pack there is no communication getting happen between this interface you will also see for jitter graph is not getting generated because there is no data there is no traffic traffic is getting dropped what I'll do again I'll, I'll again shut and shut it it will take some time yeah again the path via port 2 is restored see now slowly the graph of the packet loss will you know it it will decline let's wait for some time can see that the graph is getting declined latency graph is you know we can see graph is getting captured now so this is the feature you know which we can you know configure a FortiGet firewall to utilize both the links for load balancing method so this is a very advanced topic in FortiGet. I will cover more videos in future. So that's all for today's. I hope you guys have liked this video. If you guys like this video, like my videos. You can comment in my uh, comment in the videos like what kind of videos you you guys want. I'll uh, you know prepare such kind of videos in future. So thank you for watching my videos. Bye.